Hello again. Um, now we are ready to start a new section. What we're going to be seeing now is how we can use a special type of memory called caches to make the processor memory interaction faster. The processor memory interaction is very, very important for overall computer performance. So understanding that is very, very important. So here's what we're going to see in this section. We're going to see the basics of caches. Then we're going to understand why caches work. Uh, we're going to see how to put a, several caches together into a hierarchy. We're going to see how we organize um, caches in a way that makes them fast and effective. And finally, we're going to see how we can make software better uh, at using uh, caches. So let's start with a question. So how does execution time of this program go, grows with the value of size. So in, in this uh, example we have is we have an array with as many elements as the value of this size um, uh, of the size defined and we have a variable called a and all this is doing is adding the value of uh, several of the array elements into a we're accumulating them into a this inner loop here is iterating over array repeatedly you know, as, um, so it's, it's, it's iterating over the entire array, and the outer loop is iterating over the entire array repeatedly. So we have an inner loop and an outer loop, okay? So uh, how do you expect the plot of execution time to be with respect to size? Certainly it doesn't go down. It probably goes up because as size goes, as a value size goes up, this program is going to take longer because the inner loop is going to be longer. So, hmm, let's see how it looks. So here's the actual data of this experiment, okay? So we had was here's time and here's size. And there's two interesting things to note here. First is, there's a knee in this curve here, okay, there's a knee in the curve. And then there's two other, essentially flat lines here. And, and uh, they don't have exactly the same slope. So at some point, there's some threshold that makes that after you go above the threshold in size, the execution time grows faster. So something is getting slower as we grow the value of size. And this turns out, turns out to be exactly the caches. If the array, if the array fits in cache entirely, we're going to have a slope. As long as it does not fit in cache anymore, we're going to start to have to go to memory more often, then we're going to have a different curve. We, we have a, a different slope, okay? So, and the, the problem here is that there is this processor memory bottleneck that we need to, to address. And the reason this bottleneck exists is that the CPU itself had its performance growing every 18 months, okay? Growing very, very fast. That's why we have super fast computers today. And as we saw early on in this course, you see there was a dramatic increase in number of transistors, dramatic increase in performance, and so on. Memory, although memory also evolved, it did not evolve as fast as the processor. Not the memory latency, nor the, the bandwidth to move data in and out of the processor. So the, the problem here is that there's a lot of waiting fundamentally, right? If the processor is getting faster, much quicker than memory is getting faster, that means that this parity is growing up. This is also known as the memory wall, okay? So ultimately, the big problem is that there'll be lots of waiting on memory. Processors do not like to wait. If they're waiting, they're wasting time. It hurts performance. But because memory didn't get as fast, didn't get fast enough compared to the processor, they'll be waiting. So how do we solve this problem? Well, what we're going to do is put this little bit of memory closer to the processor here, okay, called the cache, okay, and that's going to hold data that's exit frequently. And since the cache is smaller and closer to the processor, it's much, much faster to access data stored in the cache. Okay? One of the reasons that caches are fast is because they are small. Right? Fundamentally, since you have speed of light, if you make things small, you can make them fast. The larger you make them, fundamentally, they're going to be slower. Okay? So um, let's think about the word cache for a second. The English definition is a hidden storage space for uh, hidden storage space for provisions, weapons, or treasures. In our case, your treasure is data. Okay? In computer science, the definition is a computer memory with short access time used for storage of data that's access data or code that's accessed um, frequently or recently. 
okay? So, um, and more generally, it's essentially used to optimize data transfers between system elements with different characteristics, okay? You could imagine caches, uh, you, you know, you have a, a cache for pages in your browser, it's a form of cache. You can uh, cache IO to disk, because disks are also not very fast, so if you access data repeatedly, you can put uh, data in a faster memory. Just, these are all forms of caches, okay? So let's see now how the general cache mechanics works, okay? So we have our cache here, and we have memory, and memory is going to have a bunch of locations or blocks, and um, so and the, the unit of transfer between memory and caches is this block, okay? So that means we're not going to move a byte at a time. And we're going to see that actually helps us a lot. We're going to see that why soon. But here, see the, let's see the mechanics, okay? So and one thing that's important to note here, by the way, is that the cache stores a subset of memory, okay? So again, the reason that caches are fast is because they're small, so they're going to be much smaller than memory. So it can only hold a subset of the data stored in, uh, in memory. So the first concept is what we call a hit. Okay? A hit means whenever you want to access the data, okay, let's say that the processor that's right here, okay, that's, that's where the CPU is, asks for 14. Well, if it happens to be in the cache, we call a hit. So that means that the data, the CPU asks for the data, and then the cache can provide the data back. So that's much that's fast, right? Because we took advantage of that's a good thing, right? We took advantage of the fact that cachers are fast and provide the data from the cache. This is uh, in contrast to what we call a miss. So suppose that uh, the a data block B is needed by the CPU here, okay? And we happen to need 12. So we're going to ask: Is it is 12 here? Well, the answer is no, it's not. Okay, so it's a miss. So what happens now? What do you think? Well, we're going to have to go to memory and get the data. So the cache requests 12 from memory. So the value, the uh, uh, 12 is, gotten, is uh, obtained from memory, and then it gets transferred to the cache, and now it's stored in the cache. And note that, let me show you, note that something else got kicked out. What happened? 9 has to be kicked out to uh, store 12. We're going to see in detail later why this is uh, this is important. Or since the cache is finite, we have to kick things out. So the choice of what is going to be kicked out is very, very important. Okay. So one thing I don't want you to forget from uh, this this first video on caches is that a cache is this little bit of very, very fast memory in between CPU and lots of slower memory. Okay. So we can give the CPU the illusion that memory is faster by putting a little bit of storage closer to it. Okay, see you soon.